Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. There's a lot of information that you can get by examining your boa's tail. This includes its sex, its location of ancestry, as well as its subspecies. In fact, there are a number of different types of boas which are named based on the size, shape, and or color of their tail. Today I want to compare and contrast the tails of several different types of locality boas, pointing out the differences and similarities between them. If you like this video, please subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel for more videos on all aspects of keeping and breeding boa constrictors in captivity. So it's logical to start off the video about boa tails by looking at the one with arguably the most famous tail of all, and that is of course the true red tail boa, boa constrictor constrictor. So these animals are known for their very long, very bright red tails. And while there are some other types of boas, like the Colombian boa, which are known as red tail boa in the pet trade, there's really only um, one subspecies of true red tail boa, that is boa constrictor constrictor from South America. And so there's a number of different localities of boa constrictor constrictor, and everybody has their own particular favorite. But I would say objectively that the locality that has the most consistent longest brightest red tail is that from Suriname. And this is a four-year-old male Suriname boa constrictor constrictor. And you can see just how long and bright red his tail is. So the tails of true red tail boas will typically have anywhere from about six to about 10 tail saddles. And so in the best examples, the red actually continues up past the vent and even the first body saddles have this nice reddish tint to them. And so another thing that's beautiful about the tails of the Suriname true red tails is the best examples will have this huge amount of contrast in the tail. You can see the bright red tail and then the tail saddles are surrounded by black and then in between them we have this beautiful creamy white collar. So it's just a gorgeous exquisite looking tail. Although the Suriname true red tail boa typically have the longest and reddest tails of the true red tails, other localities of true red tails have beautiful tails of their own. And this is a five-year-old male Peruvian red tail boa. And looking at its tail, you can see, although it's not quite as long or as bright red as the Suriname, it just has a beautiful look all of its own. So you can see the red is a little bit darker. It's kind of more of a brick red color, but it has this outline with black and this beautiful creamy white in between each tail saddle. So just a beautiful animal, um, even compared to the Suriname. And then one thing that the Peruvian boas definitely have going for them is their overall color scheme. They have this beautiful golden yellow color to their body. Um, and as well as the very high contrast and the beautiful belly speckling, uh, the darker belly. So Peruvian boas are arguably one of the most beautiful snakes that are in captivity today. Although the true red tails are of the subspecies boa constrictor constrictor, when many people talk about a red tail, they're actually talking about the common boa, boa imperator. And this is known in the pet trade as the Colombian red tail, or many pet shops will simply call them red tail boas, although they're not the true red tail boa constrictor constrictor. So looking at the, the tail of this animal, you can see, although it does have quite a bit of red, it's not nearly as bright or as long of a tail as the true red tail boa. And it has quite a bit more black in the pattern as well. So although it's not a true red tail, it's still certainly a very attractive looking snake. And this is a Colombian boa from the Coops Pastel bloodline. And this has been selectively bred for these beautiful orangey pastel colors. So still a very colorful and very attractive boa, even if it isn't technically a true red tail. And so I've seen a lot online where some of these boa hobbyists will get really bent out of shape when someone who's new to boas posts a picture of their boa and they call it a red tail when it's really a boa imperator. 
And I often thought that this was kind of strange. I mean, we know it's not a ball constrictor constrictor. No one is saying that. And it does have some red in its tail. So technically, it still has a reddish tail. So I wonder why the people get so bent out of shape. It's, it's almost like the identity of their own true red tail boa is, is being threatened by this person claiming that their boa imperator is a red tail. The next type of boa that we'll examine has the longest tail of any boa, and that is, of course, the long-tailed boa, boa constrictor longicata. And so, at this point, I'll just say that um, you can tell a lot about a boa by its tail, and one of the things is the sex. And if you examine an adult boa's tail, once you have a little bit of training, it should be pretty obvious whether you have a male or female. So when you look at the tail of a male boa, the paired copulatory organ that's known as the hemipenes is contained within the tail in an inside out uh, format, almost like a sock that's inside out. And then it comes right side out when it uh, leaves or when it uh, is extended from the cloaca in order to mate with the female. And so looking at the tail of a male, typically a male boa will have a tail that's about a third longer than a female of the same subspecies and same size. And the shape of the male tail is also quite a bit thicker throughout most of its length, and then it tapers abruptly. So by contrast, the female has a shorter tail that's kind of more conical in, in shape. It, it tapers quite gradually over the length of the entire tail. So getting back to the long tail boa, these animals have the longest tail and also the longest hemipenes of any type of boa. And so if you probe them by sticking a probe in the inverted hemipenes to determine the sex, they can probe for about 30 of the subcaudal scales, these scales at the base of the tail. So this is deeper than any other type of boa will probe. And so the long tail boa is also um, famous for the change in coloration, so they get quite a bit darker as they age. And this is a four-year-old male who's getting pretty close to sexual maturity. You can see he's darkening up quite a bit as he's getting older. So that's the long-tailed boa. Then on the other end of the spectrum, we have the short-tailed boa, boa constrictor amorali. And so these are also known as Bolivian boas, or uh, there's a form from South Brazil known as the South Brazilian boa. But much like as the name suggests, they have the shortest tails of any boa. And looking at this particular example, this uh, four-year-old female, you can see that her tail has only about three tail saddles from the vent to the tip. So very short tail indeed. In fact, the entire body of the short-tailed boa, boa constrictor amorali, is kind of compressed. They're, they're a much stouter, shorter boa than other types of boas. Um, they're not quite as short and stubby as, say, a ball python, but they're kind of headed in that direction, a much stout, uh, more thick uh, boa. The last boa tail I'm going to examine today is that of the Argentine boa, Boa constrictor occidentalis. And as I mentioned before, this is probably my personal favorite locality boa of them all. So looking at the overall coloration, you can see the beautiful dark colors, this beautiful dark um, chocolatey mocha coloration with these lighter caramel and creamy markings, as well as this overall reticulated looking pattern rather than having discrete saddles. And when you look at the tail, the tail is similar to the overall body. It's very dark. And in fact, most Argentine boas don't really have much in terms of tail markings at all. They just have this uniform colored uh, dark brown or black tail. And one of the things that's cool about the Argentine boas is they have really short stubby tails. So although this female, who's about five years old, is about five feet long or so, you can see her tail is only about maybe four or five inches. So very short, stubby tail. So overall, I really like the feel of these boas. Uh, I like not just the coloration and the, the markings, but 
I really like the musculature and their body shape. And I like the fact that they're strong and muscular without being overwhelming like the true red tail boas that really squeeze your hand until you can't even feel your fingers anymore. And, you know, the, as I mentioned, Argentine boa, arguably my favorite type of locality boa. They have a really cool tail as well. So that was a look at some of the more distinctive tails in boa constrictors. Something to keep in mind the next time you're looking at a picture of a boa and trying to figure out what type it is. I hope this was helpful. As always, please reach out to me with any questions that you may have. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.